Today's unboxing is on Proactizyme Plus. Proactizyme is a complex of digestive enzymes made by Nature Sunshine. Nature Sunshine is a company that I became a distributor for back in 2006, 2007. And uh, it, a very good company. I like the camaraderie. I like the terms. And uh, I learned about herbal medicine through my friends at the Claremont Herb Shop in Claremont, Florida. But uh, I was introduced to Proactizyme or Nature Sunshine. And uh, the so the idea about uh, digestive enzymes is is old. I mean, even in uh, some patients that I see, I take over for the GI guys, gastrointestinal guys, they sometimes would just go ahead and give a subscription or a prescription for um, digestive enzymes. Now, here is the... No smell, that's pretty decent. Here's the size of the capsule. And just in case you're curious, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, that's the components. So there's several different enzymes and we'll go through the enzymes in a second. All this other stuff is um, what I usually start with first with my patients that have irritable bowel syndrome, uh, dyspepsia, reflux. Essentially all this stuff is the slippery stuff, the prebiotic, uh, that actually is more something for the microbiota, the house, the slime, the biofilm, and then my two favorite probiotics. So don't just go and buy all this stuff if you have difficulty with digestion. You have to be, um, you have to work your way into it, titrate your way up. And if you're not sure how to do that, and you buy everything and you start them all. If you have a problem with your gut flaring up, you're not gonna know which thing caused the problem. So please get somebody that's uh, well-versed with how to take care of IBS, uh, bloating, dyspepsia. Go see a GI person, or if your doctor doesn't wanna help you, get another doctor. But <clears throat> the, the other thing that we'll talk about is uh, how to add a digestive enzyme. So if you're doing all this stuff and you are improving but it's slow you might want to consider adding this to help break down your food so uh, you know I i'm going to talk about this in further but uh it's such a nice day today and it's one of the last days that's not so bad outside that i'm going to take this outside digestive enzymes are you can go to any um vitamin place and find a whole plethora of different ones you can get them online too but for my patient that i talked to this morning Saturday, we are making progress with her as far as indigestion, dyspepsia. So a lot of Americans, I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but a lot of Americans overeat, uh, get too stressed out and have a lot of symptoms of indigestion. That's burning into the epigastrium, that's reflux, you bend over and you have the bad taste of food. You can't lie down flat at night because everything comes up, so you gotta take Prilosec. And honestly, that's a, a proton pump inhibitor. Prilosec, Omeprazole, Protonix, Nexium. They're all really powerful. They shut down all the stomach acid. And there's got to be something good about that if you're uh, like a precancer, esophageal cancer, Barrett's esophagus patient. But we're ha we have to have acid. You can't just shut down acid and not have any consequences. Uh, I mean, there used to be H2 blockers, Tagamet, Zantac, and Pepsid. And they were pretty decent. Tagamet, for the longest time, I think, uh, was the number one seller in the world, I believe. But then the PPIs, the proton pump inhibitors, came in. Uh, however, the H2 blockers, I would say, use it for a short time. If anything, it could help tighten up the lower esophageal sphincter so food didn't come back up. But work on digestion after that so you can get off of the pill. Nowadays, everybody skips over Tagamet, Zantac, and Pepsi and goes straight to Prilosec over the counter. And, you know, that medicine is good, but it also is bad because it can cause fatigue. It definitely causes magnesium deficiency, B12 deficiency. It, because of no acid, you can't cleave stuff. If you can't cleave stuff and digest food properly, you're gonna have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, or inflammatory bowel disease. So you need digestive enzymes, you need acid, but fear that if you're suffering, it might be a temporary respite for you. So bottom line is that digestive enzymes are important. Proactizyme is a nice one. 
I go by Consumer Labs now and I'll put a list of what they approve down below. Consumer Labs is an awesome site. I have nothing, I don't get kickbacks from them. I don't, this is, I am promoting them because I think they're very helpful as a warehouse of information, neutral too. So uh, I think it's like three to five bucks a month, but it's very valuable. So uh, they have articles that their scientists are referenced. Uh, they're neutral. I've seen them call some companies to the carpet as far as, well, you say this on your label, well, we tested, we batch tested and it wasn't there, fix it. And I've seen some good companies come back at them, but uh, so anyway, I, I would, uh, I think the idea about digestive enzymes is important. So here's the thing, I've got two to three patients that have lived through pancreatic cancer. And when you have pancreatic cancer, you want to get that pancreas out of your system because it's cancerous before it starts to spread. So yeah, you can take the organ out, but you're going to need that organ for digestion. So if you survive the pancreatic cancer, cool. If you, that's a Whipple's procedure, nasty procedure. Uh, my mom had pancreatic cancer. She probably should have tried that surgery, um, but that's okay. Uh, God bless her. Um, however, when you take the pancreas out, you have to do the work of the pancreas from that point on. And that means digestive enzymes. The pancreas is responsible for insulin, glucagon, but it's also responsible for making the digestive enzymes. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Any enzyme is useful for breaking down solid material. It's a protein that the body makes, the pancreas, and it, it's uh, useful for certain foods or, or macronutrients. Let's take the top three. Uh, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Everybody knows that. So those macronutrients, if you can break them down, they can be absorbed from the digestive tube, that 27-foot tube, into the bloodstream, to the liver, assimilated, and used as building blocks. There you go. So the idea, though, is if your pancreas is not working anymore because it was cut out, or if your pancreas went through a shock, like pancreatitis from alcohol, or pancreatitis from an infection, while you're waiting for that gland to kick back in and know its function and get used to the timing of your meals, secretion of enzyme, you can take digestive enzymes. And the digestive enzymes are more than the three I mentioned, uh, or uh, they take care of more products than the three products I mentioned, but they are important to take at the first bite of your meal. In fact, chewing your food appropriately is really important. I think it's the Seventh Day Adventist that have to chew each bite of food 30 times, I believe. It's very meticulous, but it, it's, it's important. You have to work, masticate, you work to break down your food, you mix it in with amylase, an enzyme in your saliva, you initiate breakdown at that point in time, and then the stomach has an easier process. Those of you who have um, meal substitutes, where the food's mushy already, you blend it, uh, I think that's fair. Uh, protein powders, I think that's fair too. It's already in a very easily, easy to absorb uh, uh, form, but you know, that's expensive. So um, I think that uh, those folks who need it for life, there is prescription um, enzyme that I had to give my two patients that live through Whipple's procedure. And I would just, I, I took over. The, the GI guys that watch them, you know, they see them once a year. I, I have a lady that I think she's 80 and she made it through Whipple's procedure. So she has to get her digestive enzymes every month. Uh, I would just refill it because the GI guy was busy. I mean, he wasn't going to do anything different. So I just did it myself. But in the case where you have your pancreas, but it's just not functioning properly, then it's fair to buy over the counter digestive enzymes. And yeah, you got to take the serving, one serving at the first bite of your meal and hopefully it goes into your stomach where the meal goes and it mixes in while the stomach churns its, and does its thing, as long as it has some acid. I'll get to that in a second. And then the digestive enzyme works, the acid works, you break down the meal, the food, the solid, you turn it into chyme and it gets out from the stomach into the small intestine and then the liver takes over and a whole bunch of other things occur to, for absorption of the nutrient. So I was gonna mention uh, those of you who take H2 blockers, proton pump inhibitors, uh, H2 blockers are pro, uh, Pepsi, Zantac, uh, Tagamet, and proton pump inhibitors are the next level, much stronger. They're um, 
Prilosec, Nexium, Axid, Protonics, um, Omeprazole, they're over the counter. They used to be prescription. All, all those things used to be prescription, but uh, I think it's dangerous that they're over the counter, but you know, the company's lost their patent. So the fact that you can grab that, anybody can grab it for indigestion is fair. It's like taking an atomic bomb for a little skirmish, but people who take that forever and don't change their nutrition plan, that's wrong. Because those medicines, not the H2 blockers, Pepsid, Zantac, and Tagamet, but the big guys, the proton pump inhibitors, Nexium, Omeprazole, Prilosec, those all turn off all stomach function. And you have to have your stomach secrete acid. If you don't, then the solid particles you eat will not get broken down. I mean, the stomach can churn as much as it wants, but if there's no acid, how are you gonna melt anything? So I don't agree with chronic use. In fact, the black box warning in the PDR used to be stop all proton pump inhibitors in 12 weeks and reassess. Now we have people using it forever and I do believe it adds to osteoporosis. There's a question about pancreatic cancer, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, I think the com that's, that's not common, but I would not want even a hint of that if it was still uncommon. But the more common things are fatigue, uh, B12 deficiency, magnesium deficiency, indigestion. So I, yes, it might help initially, but I think in the long run, you're asking for trouble. So fix your diet. I mean, get a nutritionist or a doctor that knows something about nutrition and fix that first. If you need those band-aids for short term, fine. Now, going back to the digestive enzymes, if you need them for short term because you still have your pancreas, you're just trying to reshock your system to get things to work properly, I think it's fair to take a digestive enzyme. Uh, my patient that I talked to this morning, Saturday, we're going to do it for at least an experiment of about three to four weeks. That's the life of a bottle. I think a serving will be one capsule to two capsules. And, uh, and I'll put what the consumer lab approved in the comments section, but um, depending on which one that is found available in her area on iHerb or Amazon, we will hopefully be able to use a digestive enzyme serving with each meal, four meals a day. And I think that if nothing else changes with her during that three to four weeks, if she has good success, then we got it. I think it's just a matter of having the digestive system work better and uh, having the brain not remember the cramping, that uh, the burning that it remembers from before. Because uh, again, that's what people remember. And sometimes when you have a tiny hint of a cramp, uh, it makes your brain zoom back to the first day where you had a lot of pain and then your brain induces um, a magnification of the severity. So. Uh, I think I've told that story before that I passed out and had uh, amoebic dysentery in the Philippines on the toilet, which is totally embarrassing. And that was 1987. And if I have even a hint of the nastiest cramp in my belly, that will zoom my brain right back to 1987. And I'll start to get sweaty, uh, get a little dizzy. My heart will start pounding because it reminds me of that event back in 1987. You could say it's almost like a PTSD, but bottom line is that uh, the, the brain and then the gut work simultaneously. Uh, so it's not just a matter of taking digestive enzymes, taking away bad foods or, or irritating foods, tomato, uh, peppermint, coffee bean, alcohol, spicy food, chocolate. Um, it's also a matter of calming the brain down and, and working with anxiousness. Um, so Skullcap is a really good uh, neurotonic that helps with calming and uh, coats the stomach so something else to keep in mind but again for the purposes of this discussion uh, technically unboxing I think that the digestive enzymes are a great thing to take advantage of listen this is not meant for medical uh, uh, advice so bring this information right out right down the notes maybe the digestive enzymes and uh, ask your doctor and if your doctor has no idea what I'm you're talking about what I'm talking about get a new doctor, no, no, go to a specialist. That might help, or a nutritionist that's well-versed in designing nutrition practices for you guys. So hopefully this gives you a couple of bullet point ideas. Now my patient in particular, she's doing great. 
Uh, we're still working on reintroducing foods. She took away all the bad foods. We reintroduced the slippery stuff, the biofilm foods, marshmallow root, DGL, slippery elm. And we started a probiotic uh, now that the slippery stuff is there. So that biofilm is slippery. It coats the lining of the digestive system so that the probiotic will adhere into the lining. And then hopefully if everything's cool, we can reintroduce more foods and then the postbiotics get produced. Postbiotics are short-chain fatty acids that help to heal the lining too. So all this stuff is really cool the way it works, but it's important that you get away from the crappy stuff. You calm down. I always talk about this exercise, mindful practice, nutrition that helps and doesn't harm. All those things are important uh, so that you can digest like you used to. Remember when you were like 20 and you can eat anything and, and not be hungry all day or eat properly and wait? We, some people can't do that anymore. So uh, it would be great to get back to that level of youth. Uh, but obviously smartly, you, you don't just abuse the food systems from before. You, you treat your body as a temple you feed the temple or the Ferrari high-end fuel and you'll have it per better. So hopefully this gives you a couple of ideas, but if you have any comments on what digestive enzymes are, put them down below. If you have a successful brand you like, I'd like to hear about it, put it in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the alert button for when I do new videos, and also pass this on because I think a lot of people are a little confused as far as where to go with their digestion because their doctor said, oh, you're fine. All your blood tests are fine. It's in your head. You know, I don't agree with that, but that's me. I'm integrative medicine. So hang in there, stay safe, and I'll talk to you at the next video.